Hello, my name is Matt Butler. I'm with Eastern Engineering. I've been a service technician for 18 years. I've been trained on all the kit models and I've been to the North American headquarters in Detroit to be certified. And today I'd like to discuss the basic operation of your KIP 660 printer. Today I will be discussing how to operate your KIP 660 printer. I will be going through how to load paper, uh, how to install toner, how to remove paper jams, also the operation of the touch screen, and how to use the scanner. When you go to load paper, uh, you'll see inside the paper drawer there's these end caps that you want to insert into the ends of the paper roll. On the outside of the end cap, there is a green handle that you want to pull out first, and then you want to insert that cap into the end of the paper roll. There's one for each side, so you insert the cap and then fold down that green handle, and that will lock it into place, and then you want to put another end cap on the other side of the roll. After you insert the end caps in your paper roll, you'll open up the paper drawer. And when you look inside the paper drawer, there's two cradles for the paper roll to set in. So you want to slide these black cradles all the way out to the sides. And then you grab the paper roll and you want to rest the the gray end cap onto the white wheels on the cradle. You want to make sure that they're inside the groove. It's easy to get the end cap slightly out of the slot, so you want to make sure it's seated down all the way. And then you take the leading edge of the paper and you feed it forward underneath this rubber roller and you just roll the paper through a couple of turns. And then you close the drawer. The paper drawer will hold two 500 foot rolls of paper from 11 inch wide to five, uh, 36 inch wide. Uh, let me say that again. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. Just take your time. I mean. The paper drawer will hold two 500 foot rolls from 11 inch wide to 36 inch wide paper. After you close the paper drawer, you'll get prompted on the touch screen to choose the type of paper that you installed. After you close the paper drawer, you'll be prompted on the touch screen to confirm the, the type and width of your paper. Here you'll see different types of paper to choose from, and you also have to tell it the width of the roll that you installed. There's a trim feature if you want to trim each roll, and when you're finished with the selections, then you hit OK to confirm the media. Now I'm going to show you how to install toner into the KIPP 660 printer. The KIPP is a toner-based printer, and this is the toner bottle that you would install on the left side of the printer. And it is a gravity-fed toner bottle, so I'll show you how to insert the bottle and then the toner will fall from the bottle into the, the hopper in the printer. When you go to install the toner bottle, you'll want to open up the toner lid on the left side of the printer. Here you'll see the four different colors of toner. And so what you do is uh, you want to turn the bottle upside down and you'll see the little the teeth on the bottle that line up with grooves on the on the toner hopper. So you want to press it downward and you should feel it kind of click into place and that will hold the bottle into place and with some slight pressure you want to hold down the bottle and open up this green lever and then also behind the bottle you want to pull open this green handle and that will open up the cap on the bottle and allow the toner to drop down. After you have the bottle installed and the green handle opened you want to tap on the bottle a little bit and let the toner fall down into the hopper Sometimes tapping on it helps get all the toner out of the bottle into the hopper. And then when you go to remove the bottle, you basically do the steps in reverse. You want to close the, the green handle on the left side of the bottle first, and then close the green lever. 
and then there's a release lock on the back side of the toner cartridge so you want to push that lever back and that will release the bottle. Now I'm going to show you how to remove jams from the KIPP 660. There's two locations you can remove a jam. One is on the left side of the printer behind the side door and the other is in the rear of the printer behind the fuser section there's a gray door you can open up. One way to remove a jam is on the left side of the printer. There's a door you can open and there's a media purge button that you can hit that that can try to remove the paper out the back if you, if, if you get a jam. If the media purge button doesn't remove the jam for you, you can manually remove the paper by removing this metal cover. There's a, a thumb screw on each side. You undo the thumb screws and this metal plate will come off. And inside there, there's another green handle that you can pull down and slide this over. You might see paper in there or behind this green handle. If you look inside the left hand side door, you'll see this is where the waste box is located. Eventually this box will get full and it will prompt you to replace it with a new one. When you go to remove the old waste box, you want to pull up on the right side of it and that will release it from the slot and then you want to slide it to the right. This way you can remove the waste box. And then if you look inside the new waste box uh, package, you'll see there's an extra uh, piece of tape that you can seal up this hole so that toner can't escape the box. Now I'm going to show you how to build the waste box for the KIPP 660. First you want to open up the plastic bag and pull out the box. It comes with several pieces of adhesive tape. You will use these later on to, to hold the box uh, together. So set those off to the side for now. This is the box and the goal is you want to flatten out all the edges so that it turns into a box. Where you want to start is I usually put my fingers through this hole here and you want it to expand the edges of the box and then start flattening it out. And sometimes it helps to gently blow in this hole just to help expand the box. And then you, s you just want to keep going around the sides until you can get all the, the sides of the box flattened. Once you get all the sides flattened, then you want to fold down these tabs so that they're on the short side of the box. You just want to get those folded down the best you can. At this point, you want to grab one of the larger adhesive tapes, peel off one side of the tape, and you want to hold down the tab start one side of the tape and then I fold back the other side and roll it down the side and that will hold the tab down. You want to repeat that for all the rest of the tabs. It, the waste box gets changed once a year. You may have to change it more frequently based on how much you print. The waste box can just be thrown away in the trash uh, when you're finished. There's no recycling needed. When techs are on site, we will be glad to build these boxes for you and leave you a couple extra boxes. At Eastern Engineering, we will be glad to construct these boxes for you and send them out to you upon request. The, the one by the, the hole you may want to put sideways 
so it doesn't cover the hole. And the, the one last step that you want to do is there is one smaller piece of tape and this goes over the edge of the hole here to give it a little bit of strength. So what you do is you peel off half of the tape, put it inside the hole like so to get it started and then take the other half and roll it down the side. That gives the box a little more strength and that is how you build the waste toner box. When you go to re reinstall the new waste box, you want the, the hole in the window to be on the left side. You slide it into this slot here. Make sure you push it all the way in and make sure that the bottom slides into this groove here on the bottom plate. Another place to remove paper jams is in the rear of the printer. You'll see on the back of this fuser section there's gray handles that you can pull on. You lower this door and you can possibly get paper inside here. Um, you do want to be careful not to reach in too far. There's some hot rollers inside there. But just want to try to gently remove any paper that's inside there. You may have an occasion where a jam occurs and you may have to cut the paper to remove it from the paper roll. So if you look inside the paper drawer, there's a green uh, handle that you can use to slide the cutter blade across. And if you slide this across, it will cut the paper. And that will allow you to free the jam from inside the printer. With your KIP print systems, we do recommend getting a, a good surge suppressor. Uh, there is one brand that we recommend, it's ESP Surge Suppressors. They have options to protect the power going into your printer as well as protecting any surges that may come through the networking cable. This is a great way to protect your print system. Now I'm going to show you the features on the touchscreen. Uh, they're pretty straightforward options here. You have uh, copy, scan, and then print. Uh, you can also view the job queue on here. And this will show you jobs that are printing currently, or there's also a show history button that will show you jobs that were previously printed. You can resubmit jobs from the history, or um, you can interrupt jobs that are being sent from the network so you can run copies. There's the interrupt network button. If we go back to the home screen, we'll go into copy first. Here you have uh, lots of options. For the most part, everything is automatic, so if you feed in a scan, and you want to make a one-to-one -one copy. The default is one-to-one -one and it'll default to color. These defaults can be changed, but you can change the color option to black and white or monochrome if you like. Uh, there's also different original types for the type of document that you're copying. Uh, the default is line photo, but you can switch it to line mode if it's just a line drawing and there's also a photo option. It will automatically switch to the, the correct roll size based on what you feed through the scanner, but you can change that by selecting media and choosing the roll that you want to use. Over here is copy count, so you can change the number of copies that you want, or you can type in a number of copies. If you scroll over, all these tiles can scroll left and right, so there's more options if you scroll over to the right. DPI is how the high the resolution is on your copy. You can change that all the way up to 600 if you like. There's also an option where you can run a hard copy and have it scanned to a PDF at the same time. There's also additional options here for 
um, adding a stamp to your copy. There is an auto deskew option that will help correct any um, crookedness in your scan. There's a print quality option to help improve the output of your copy. So you can do graphics or photo. Uh, by default, if you feed a document in, it'll automatically run one copy. But if you change the number of copies, you can run a collated set of copies if you like. And what it does is you scan in your whole set of drawings. And then when you get done scanning all the drawings, you hit start and it will run a collated set of copies for you. There's also some additional options on the right hand side of the screen. A reset will reset all the settings back to the factory default. Uh, this also will reset after a period of time. I believe the default is a few minutes. That also can be changed. There's a recall job button. This will recall the last copy job that you sent through the scanner. There is a slow option for those delicate originals. Uh, it'll help feed delicate or old documents through the scanner. Uh, there's the interrupt button. You can interrupt a print job so you can run a quick copy through the scanner. There's also a viewer option that will pull up a preview on the screen so you can zoom in and check the quality of the scan before you send the copy to the printer. And you can also save templates if there's any certain settings that you like to use. You can save a template and personalize it to your liking. And then you can recall this template later on. Now I'm going to show you the scan to file option. If you press scan, this will take you to the scan to file screen. By default, it will scan your documents as a PDF file. There's also an option to make a multi-page PDF file. If you press the file type tile, you'll see all these different file formats, but there is an option here for multi-page. You turn that on, then it will save all of the scans you make into one PDF. And how that works is you would scan all your pages through and then at the very end you would hit this green button to hit submit and that will save all the pages into one PDF file. Up here at the top there's option for color mode so you can change it from color or monochrome. There's also location as you can see the right now it's set to Google Drive there's all kinds of uh, cloud drives you can set this up with, um, including Microsoft OneDrive, um, SharePoint, Dropbox. You can also scan to a network drive. This SMB folder here is going to a file server. And there's also local folders on the printer itself that you can scan to. The printer has a hard drive stored in it and you can make multiple folders on this hard drive and scan to that and then download your scans from the printer to your desktop. If you look up back at the tiles, there's options for DPI, so you can change the DPI from 100 to 600. Uh, there's image quality settings. Uh, this is where you can adjust the, the hue on the colors. So if you need the reds to be a little brighter or the blues a little brighter, you can adjust those on the fly. Um, up here at the top, there's a save file option. And this is where you can change the file name that it creates. If you hit this little box here, you can type in a name. And then you can also put pound symbols next to the file name and that will allow it to auto name your files for you in numerical order and you can change the number that the file naming convention is using so it can tell it to start at 10 if you like 
It does have an, uh, a file overwrite alert. In case you scan to a folder that already has a file with that name, it will alert you. If you scroll the tiles to the right, you'll see some more options. There's options for rotation. Uh, you can change or add stamps to your scans if you like. These can be edited through the, the Print Pro software on your desktop. There's also a DSKU feature that will help correct any crookedness to your scans. Up here on the right hand side, there's a start button. Uh, by default, it'll go ahead and feed the document through and scan it. Um, but you can change this so that you have to press start each time. There's a reset option that will reset all the settings back to default. There's a rescan option in case you scan something through and it didn't come out quite right, or if it was a little crooked, you can hit rescan and rescan the last file. Uh, auto start is on by default, but you can turn that off. As I mentioned, you can use the start button instead. There is a slow option for those delicate documents. It'll slow down the speed that it scans. There's a viewer option that will pull up a, a larger preview of the image before it saves it. And it will even allow you to crop the image and rotate the image before it saves. And then there's also templates. So you can save templates with your personalized settings and then recall those templates later on. For instance, I can save one under my name. And then when I go to use the scanner next time, I can just pick my template and it remembers all my settings. The little house will take you back to the home screen when you're finished. The next screen I'll show you is the print option. This allows you to print documents that are either on the network or you can scan or print scans that you made. Now let me redo that. Now I'm going to show you the print screen. If you go into the print screen, this will allow you to print documents that are on the network or you can print documents that are on a flash drive. There's um, options for the type of print that you want to produce. There's an add files button on the right hand side. This here will allow you to browse different folder locations as well as cloud drive locations. For example, this is a Google Drive we have set up so you can print files from the Google Drive. You uh, select the files that you want to print and it'll check mark the files. And then when you're ready to edit the, the print job settings, just hit open. This will pull up little thumbnail previews of each file. If you want to enlarge these thumbnails, you can drag these arrows to the left and that will enlarge the preview. You can scroll through each page and see how the images look before you print them. Over here on the left you can see there's a set count. You can change the number of copies. There's a zoom option so you can change the scale. You can type in a percentage if you like. So you can do 330%, for example. And you'll see it actually changes the preview to reflect the settings you chose. So it rotated the image, indicating that it's going to rotate the print when it comes out. You can also do auto zoom, and that will automatically blow up the print so that it fits the role that you chose. So for instance, if I chose 36 inch paper and then hit auto zoom, then it will blow it up to 36 inches wide. 
And there's also settings in here for print quality. Uh, you have CAD, graphics, and photo. There's a stamp feature, so you can place your customized stamps onto the prints. Those can be edited through the Print Pro software on your desktop. Once you're ready to send the print job, just hit the green print button and the job will be sent to the printer and start printing. The prints will come out on the back of the printer and up these plastic trays. It will hold around 55 to 75 prints. It will alert you when the stacker is full to unload the stacker and it will pause the printing temporarily until you unload the stacker. You also want to keep the printer away from the, the wall in the back around two feet to give clearance for people to get around the back to clear jams and also for airflow. When you go to feed your document through the scanner you want to make sure that the scanner is face up and you want to try to center the print the best you can on the scanner. You'll see there's markings on the scanner that show the width of different size paper. So you basically want to line up the edge of the paper with those markings. There's also little guides you can use. The best thing to do is just to get it close to the line and then feed the paper right through the front until you feel it hit the, the rollers. And then hold it there for a second until it grabs it. It will automatically feed the document through the scanner and give you a quick preview on the touchscreen. You'll see on top of the scanner there is a red button and a green button. The red button is a stop button for the scanner. It's used in case you feed a document through and if it sounds like it's going to jam or if it's doing any kind of damage to your scan, this will stop the motors and stop the feeding so that you can open it up and pull the paper out. Um, also, if for some reason you want to cancel the scan, you can hit the button a second time and it will eject the print back out. There's also a, a green start button on the top of the scanner. By default it automatically feeds the document but you can change a setting on the touch screen so that you have to press the green button each time to feed the scan. On occasion you may have to clean the scanner glass. To access the scanner glass you simply raise up on the top part of the scanner and this will open up the scanner so you can see the rollers and the cameras inside. If you look up underneath the lid, there is five pieces of glass where the cameras are and you'll see LED lights flashing. Uh, you can take a lint-free cloth and wipe the glass off with the cloth or you can also use a paper towel and spray some Windex on the paper towel and wipe them off that way. If you see any sharp lines or um, streaks on your scans and cleaning the glass doesn't take care of it at first, you may need to take a flashlight and take a closer look at the glass. There could be a small speck of, um, of white out or tape or even a, a little black speck of toner and Shining a light on the glass can help you find the spot where the streak is coming from. Uh, sometimes you can even take your fingernail to kind of scrape off anything that's stuck on the glass. You also want to keep the rollers and the scanning area clean of dust. And then just press down to close the scanner. While scanning, if you turn on the viewer button on the right hand side, it will give you a preview of the scan before it saves. This will also allow you to zoom in and check the quality of the scan. 
You'll see an initial preview as the scan goes through. It will pass through a couple of software filters and then you'll see a final preview. Here you can zoom in and look closer at the document. There's also the ability to rotate the drawing. So if you want to rotate it, some drawings are too wide to scan landscapes. So sometimes you might have to rotate the drawing. There's also an option in here to show area of interest. So if you hit the show AOI, it will give you placeholders so that you can zoom in and just scan in a certain portion of the drawing. And it will only save that part of the image. When you're done, you just press the done button. On the home screen, I wanted to show you where to find the meter readings for your printer. You'll see on the home screen here, a tile that says meters. If you press that, it'll give you some more information about your printer. Eastern will ask for both meter A and B. Meter A is color and meter B is black and white. If we go back to the home screen, there's also an option to see the toner status. There's also a, a button to show you guides. There's options to see guides on how to operate the printer. These are pretty thorough guides and should cover just about everything you need to know about the printer. If you click on one of these, you can swipe through and see step-by-step -step how to perform certain tasks. With the recent release of System K2.3 software, you can now customize the touchscreen. So now we have the ability to move icons around. We can add additional icons or remove icons. So I'll show you. Here is all the options. Pretty much all the options that are in the settings menu you can put on the home screen. So you can put like the scanner white balance on there. Um, you can put in template settings in there. And the way to add icons is you drag an icon off to the home screen and drop it. So now we have the option to see the historical queue from the home screen. You can also delete items from the home screen or you can resize them. You can move them around. The last item I wanted to show you on the home screen is we have a application that allows you to request service or supplies. We call it eSAS, but you'll see our company logo there if you press this. You'll be able to order supplies or request service from the touch screen. If you go into request service, you basically just give us a brief description of the, the issue that you're having. You can also type in additional notes. When you hit submit, it will email our service department and will dispatch a technician to come out. If you press the order supplies button, from here you can order paper and toner. We have the most common sizes to choose from. So from here you can choose the number of rolls. There are two per box, so if you choose two rolls of 36 inch by 500, um, just press the blue button to add it to your order. And then on here on the right side, you can choose the color of toner if you need toner. Choose the number of cases of toner you like. Also hit the blue button to add it to your order. And then here you can choose where you want it shipped, picked up, or delivered. Down at the bottom, you can put in a purchase order. And also special instructions for the, the drivers. When you hit submit, it'll give you an option to confirm your order. And then you hit submit one more time and that will email 
our office and we'll process the order for you. When you're done, just hit the little house button and that'll take you back to the home screen.